trying to shovel in the driveway, make sure you head outside and enjoy the awesome pow we have here in Prince George. And if you think there's a lot in the city right now, wait till you head up to the mountains. They are getting... Yeah, I guess I first thought about climbing uh, probably when I guess I was around 15 uh, when I uh, uh, made a trip out Highway 16 East and we drove past uh, Mount Robson. It was the first time I'd ever seen it and the view from the highway is just kind of uh, mind-blowing if you've never seen it before. And I think that's, that's when it kind of sparked an interest in that I'd like to climb that someday. And uh, it, it took quite a long time from, from that day before I actually got into climbing. I'd never thought about climbing or mountains or anything before that. I mean, living in Prince George, it's not exactly a, what you'd call a mountain environment. But uh, yeah, so seeing that for the first time uh, was where, where the inspiration came from. The first technical climbing that I had done was a week uh, week at a climbing school down in um, Joffrey Lakes area. The course was basically uh, uh, mountaineering, so uh, you know all the basic skills that you would need for, for, for mountaineering travel, glacier travel, it was an eye-opener. And it, it was one of those things that kind of led me to think, yeah, I want to do more of this stuff. I guess the thing is though, you, you come from down there and doing the course and you come back to Prince George and you don't know anybody that's a climber. So then you kind of got to figure out, uh, well, how do I meet somebody who's interested in doing the same thing? You can't post it on the internet <laughs> because there was none. Learning in those days without a mentor, or without anybody to show you, I guess in hindsight, we're pretty lucky that we actually survived most of it. I mean, th there were things that we, we did that I look back on and go, never should have done that. Uh, so yeah, I guess in those days, you know, when you're out there learning by yourself, that, that school of hard knocks things, that kind of luck if you get through it. It's certainly not, not by skill. There just really wasn't anybody around that was doing much of that sort of thing in, in Prince George. So in the, in the 90s, I um, started to get out quite a bit uh, with my younger son, who was a pretty keen climber. The first kind of big climb I did with Bryce was when he was, uh, he was 15 years old. We were at uh, Marble Canyon, down by Lillooet, and uh, we were doing a multi-pitch climb so I was leading all the pitches because he hadn't done any leading before. And I think uh, somewhere near the last three pitches, he said, Dad, can I lead a pitch? And I went, okay. So he not only led that pitch, but he led the last three pitches through some, some pretty gnarly terrain. And I think that was the last time that uh, I've done any leading when, when we go climbing together, so it's pretty much him taking me climbing, and it started when he was 15. Kind of the tables were reversed where he would mentor me, I guess, uh, on a lot of different aspects. You learn by doing, but it's if you have somebody that can show you things and uh, 
point things out, it's, it's probably the, the better way to go. It would, it would have been pretty cool if I'd had somebody that was able to show me a lot of this stuff rather than just kind of fumbling my way through it. So I've kind of gone from the position of having no mentoring at all and then um, taking my son and he ended out mentoring me uh, and I'm able to pass some of that same stuff on to other people as well. Anthony and I met through, uh, through a mutual friend and uh, he expressed some interest in, in learning a little bit about uh, doing some root development. There was a new crag that I was looking at and uh, I asked him if he wanted to have some, uh, some input in learning how to do some root developing and yeah, he was keen. I'd always heard his name, um, climb with other friends who knew him. I, mean, I kind of heard of this older climber in town and uh, kind of when Overhang was starting up, we we kind of both came onto that project around the same time. And through that, I, I'd given him a, an idea of what I wanted to learn climbing and uh, he was willing to show me and take me out and show me some of, uh, some of the places that he knew. We're out here climbing Armageddon today, and this is the one of the first routes that Ken put up in, in the region. I would say it's my favorite route that he's, he's put up. It's one I come back to year after year. It's something I still enjoy climbing um, as often as I can. Um, it wasn't until I met Ken that I really had somebody to show me how to do a lot of this stuff that I felt more comfortable with it. He showed me how to look at a piece of rock and see a line, or to really think about it in terms of what could I do with this. He's never closed off. He's never held the information that he knows or the lessons that he's learned too tightly. He will share so freely. Um, with really anybody who's willing to learn. I certainly don't know everything, but I can pass on lots of uh, lots of uh, experiences that I've had. I like doing that kind of thing. You don't do it because you want you you want to be recognized or you want to leave a legacy. You do it because you're you're out there. You're enjoying what it is you're doing.